my channel. I am Crystal O. And today we're going to be talking about some of my thoughts on waiting until marriage to have sex. Yes, I said it. I said it. It's so much more different when you say it out loud on YouTube. But anyways, so today we're going to be talking about some of my thoughts on the topic of waiting until marriage to have sex sex and if you grew up in a household like me where you didn't really hear about sex unless someone got pregnant or you're being told not to do it then you can relate with maybe the awkwardness or maybe the taboo nature of sex so or the conversation of sex so this is uncomfortable I'm sorry but hopefully it'll be helpful for you so quick disclaimer okay because disclaimers are necessary to clarify <sighs> this video is not to shame to judge or to condemn anybody okay hear me say this anyone it is not to condemn anybody okay this video is merely just me trying to express my thoughts on the topic of sex and around this conversation of sex and if you're new to my channel I am all about inspiration I'm all about encouragement on my Instagram that's what I love to do I love to encourage through beauty fashion lifestyle faith and of course I love food but I love to inspire and encourage. So this video is merely for the purpose of inspiring, encouraging, and also, I just feel like this conversation is needed, okay? Like when I was trying to struggle through my celibacy, I didn't see videos like this. So here we go, and I hope this video is helpful for someone out there. So let's get into the conversation about waiting until marriage to get it on, get it popping, 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 popping. I'm done, I promise. So I know this conversation is very sensitive and controversial for a lot of people, so please refrain from leaving hate comments below or negative comments below. If you would not say it to your mother, yourself, or your siblings, do not leave it below. Just don't do it, okay? We're all humans and you can respectfully disagree without attacking my character or me. Just, just not cute, it's just not cute. So um, yeah, so when I talk about sex, I always love to include the whole idea of purity. I feel like we forget about purity when we talk about the combination of sex because we just look at sex as this grandiose, huge thing and we forget about the umbrella of purity. And it's still so, so necessary to understand that purity is a larger and bigger sheltering concept and it's very, very important, especially as Christians, to the heart of God and for our lives. For example, I was a virgin, I was celibate, and I remember being a virgin just walking around like, they're having sex, they're having intercourse, I am not having intercourse. But meanwhile, I wasn't all the way pure, okay? I would look at some things that probably weren't the most pure, I would look at a man lustfully, I would watch some things, I would do some things with men that maybe not, not be so pure. So. There is a difference, okay? So I would use sex as my crutch, and this is before Christ, before I got saved, and before I came to Jesus, amen, praise God. I literally pushed up sex to the standard of like holiness. Like if I am not having sex and I am holy, it doesn't matter how else I'm living or if I'm sitting on in other areas of my life, if I'm just a virgin or celibate. But that indeed is not true because purity matters to Jesus. Purity matters in our walk as Christians. So we have to make sure that we are not deceiving ourselves and making ourselves think that we are one, better than others, two, that purity does not matter, three, that we still have to walk out daily in holiness in other areas of our lives, that we still have to walk out in obedience to walk out in holiness as God has called us to in every other area of our lives. It's not just our sexuality or the area of sex that matters to God. Everything matters to God, okay? All right, so for me being celibate and waiting until marriage to have sex, I would feel like some shame around this because of course in culture, look around you, everywhere, magazines, commercials, TV, even in like the public, <laughs> people can be very sexual and I think that um, because it's so common to be having sex or to be, you know, 
pronouncing your sexual activities with others or the world, um, it can make waiting really awkward, uncomfortable, embarrassing, and shame inducing. I remember specifically when it comes to my relationship with my now husband, I remember being asked when we were dating why we weren't living together and I was just like, hmm. How do I not sound like holier than thou? How do I not sound like I'm just lame? How do I not sound like I'm trying to push my views onto this person? But I soon came to the realization that I can't hide my values or discredit them or you know be ashamed of them because they are mine and of course I'm doing this to glorify God to protect myself and my heart but Definitely shame inducing, definitely embarrassing, definitely sometimes um, awkward, but be proud of your choice. Be proud of your value. Be proud of the standard that you have made for yourself. Other people are a lot about their decisions. Other people are a lot about their sexuality and their engagement in sex. So why can't you be loud about your abstinence or celibacy? It just makes sense to me. Nobody has to agree with you, but you can feel comfortable with sharing your values and beliefs. And also, from a place that's not prideful, from a place that is not trying to belittle others, just from a place of respecting another person's choices, but also staying firm on yours. So another thing about waiting on to manage to have sex for me was that it's kind of a struggle when finding someone who's on the same page as you when it comes to not wanting to have sex until marriage and wanting to honor God with your bodies and with the temple, okay? I struggled in some of these areas. I had boyfriends who weren't really wanting to wait. Like they would just wait because I wanted to wait. But I could tell the difference between, you know, a man who is waiting because I'm waiting or a man who is on the same page as me and is waiting because he wants to glorify God and wants to come into that with agreement with me and wait together. There is a clear difference and I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to share too much, but I would just say that there was a lot more sexual activities being partaken in in the one where the guy was waiting because I was waiting and trying to, you know, respect that whatever but it, it didn't really work out like that because if I'm I'm weak and you's weak we all gonna be weak if you get what I'm saying you get what I'm saying and honestly the Lord provides when I met my husband I was literally shook that you know he was out here waiting I was actually shook about how many of his friends that were waiting until marriage so don't be discouraged there are people out there who are striving, who are fighting, who are on the same page as you with your commitment and desire to glorify God with your body. So don't be discouraged, don't give up, and don't feel the need to settle. Don't feel the need to lower your standards to accommodate somebody else's. Don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. Cause it never ends well, like it never ends well. Waiting on some marriage to have sex eliminates so many problems that you, yes you, do not want in your life, especially for me. I don't Waiting until marriage for me, of course, protects me from STDs, protects me from accidentally, unexpectedly getting pregnant, okay? It also protects my heart. I feel like for me, when I was not being sexual or engaging in sexual activity with people I met, I was able to guard my heart and see things like clearer. Light as day, okay? So you will then see the person for who they are and not for how much you love, da da da, okay? But you will love the person so much more for who they are, you'll be able to see much more clearly who they are and what you like about them and whatever else, you know, that you need to know about them besides the sexual part. It's so crazy because even biologically, there are hormones that are secreted, okay? Secreted, there are hormones that are secreted and it's called oxytocin. So this is the same hormone that is released when a woman is breastfeeding, when a woman gives birth to a child, and when you are having sex. So this hormone is literally called the love hormone. And what it does is that it creates this bond and this attachment. And I don't know about you, but when a girl or a guy or whoever has sex, something clicks in their brain and they just kind of go crazy. Like they have this obsession with this person or they may get attached or whatever else. But the whole point of it is that an attachment is formed and a bond is being formed. And if it's someone that's just not committed to you, then that's just really sad because now you out here attached to a person that does not want you. And that's what we're not gonna do, okay? We're not going to beg someone to want to be with us 
because we're attached to them chemically and biologically so so I feel like throwing away the whole concept of sleeping with anyone until you're married is just much more about protecting you. I feel like God calls us to this standard because he knows that it's for our own good. He knows that it's for our own protection. And he knows that sex in the context of marriage is beautiful because it's just one person. If you get it popping all day, every day, wherever you want to, no guilt, no nothing, no shame. It's, it's, it's really lit. I truly believe the wait was worth it. So God was not lying. I'm a testament to that. So my now husband and I, waited two years to engage in some sexual activities to have sex to have intercourse let's just say it okay let's just say it said it's done so we waited to have sex it took two years it took two years well yeah we got engaged and planned the wedding and um it was less struggle of course boundaries had to be put in place of course we had to have accountability we had to have people in our corner that were just you know checking in on us and people we could just confess to or share with to kind of gain freedom from whatever we was trying to do i noticed that with me I have this spirit of wanting to be desired, okay? So I would, you know, kind of be a little cute, a little sexy, you know, around him. And that's a no-no. If you're trying to wait until marriage to have sex, that's, it's not going to work. You can't be trying to tempt your partner. You can't be trying to tempt the person you're with to stumble with you. You have to deal with your own problems, okay? You have to deal with your own unhealthy uh, patterns of wanting to be desired and that of course came from before I was saved but I was being sanctified to feel me God was stripping me of that spirit okay that nature so I had to do the hard work and say Lord why do I feel the need to be desired only when a guy wants me sexually like why you know why Lord share share with me speak I'm listening. I had to realize that that was so deeply rooted in insecurities and I had to do the hard work of eliminating that. So you have to have boundaries set in place. It has to be a same page, a commitment, an agreement that is done between two people who are truly seeking to honor God. Because when it's so much more about just not having sex and about honoring God and about honoring your own body and about making sure that soul ties or anything else is not formed with this person, you gonna fight. You won't fight, okay? You won't fight to, you know, receive the reward that comes with having sex in the union of marriage. So the last thing that I would say about this topic that a lot of people don't really think is important to do would be to have the conversation. Have it. Have it, have it, have it. I think it's so important to, first of all, make sure that the person you trying to be with is on the same page with you and not like on page 50 or on page one when you over here on page 100. Like, no, make sure the conversation is had. Make sure that you sense that it's sense and discern that this person is indeed waiting and has been abstinent and would like to glorify God. I think talking about your sexual past or talking about your sexual history is important when going into a healthy relationship because it clarifies and helps lay out expectations. So if you don't discuss it, then one night homeboy gonna be over at your place or homegirl gonna be over at your place and I'm gonna be on the couch and next thing you know, you got a hand on you. Next thing you know, y'all on the floor. Next thing you know, and dun dun dun. You know what I mean? You feel me? Okay. So you have to talk about this beforehand. Okay. Do you want, are you waiting until marriage to have sex? What's your sexual history or your sexual past like? How long have you been abstinent for? How long have you been celibate before? Do you believe in celibacy? Do you believe in God? Let's start there. Okay. But this stuff has to be discussed to gain clarity. So you figure out early on before you out here hurt six months later about whether this person is indeed on the same page as you and has the same commitment and desire as you. Okay. It's important. That's basically all I have about waiting until marriage to have sex. I think it's beautiful. I think it's an amazing decision. I think it's very God glorifying. And I stand in solidarity with you. You that is trying to wait until marriage. You that is trying to maybe embark on this journey of celibacy. You that is feeling discouraged in your celibate or maybe your walk as a virgin. I don't know. This could be for anyone. But my hope is that you are inspired, that you are encouraged, that you've learned something from this video. It is hard. It could be challenging. But it 
is worth it. Say it with me. It can be hard, it can be challenging, but it is worth it. Break it down now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!